Now these are trailerable, you know, they're about eight feet wide and you know, they call them like a micro trawler or a trailable trawler or something like that. You know, there's different names for them, but that pretty much tells you what's up. Uh, now all the aluminum you see on this boat. Okay. So the railing, obviously the roof rack, uh, the back railing, and I'll, I'll go around to the back side here, even though <laughs> the boat's not cooperating with me. I'm in about two and a half feet of water. And uh, as soon as I go around to the back side, I'm in like four feet of water. So <laughs> come on, cooperate with me here. <clears throat> There's also a like a, a fish platform or a polling platform over the, the outboard back there. And then it has a like a wraparound guard, which you might be able to see. Right. You know, I just I'll just keep walking around. I'll just do this. So uh, they have a really small back deck, obviously. I mean, you, you, you're really limited by 20 feet here. This one has a 20 horse Honda four stroke on it, which is a little underpowered. I have spent enough time on these Vagamons to tell you that this, you know, there's some people who will debate this, but I don't know if they know entirely what they're talking about. Um, they really need bare minimum a 30 horse. A 40 horse is perfect. In my opinion, a 40 horse four stroke on a Vagabond and a 50 horse, possibly a 60 horse on a Nomad is perfect. Now, of course, they'll be moved around by a lot less horsepower. I mean, you can use a 9.9 .9 and people have, but you know, that's gonna be in slack water. As soon as you hit some current, as soon as you hit some weather, as soon as you're beating against some waves or all three at the same time, uh, you know, you're gonna really wish you had more horsepower. Um, to the point, if you, especially if you're going really low, like 9.9 .9 or 15, you're gonna, you know, you're, you're probably just gonna be turned around. You're gonna have to go back, um, or, you know, throw anchor or, you know what I mean? Um, it's always nice to have more horsepower than not enough. Um, of course you can overdo it. Now these are, these are not planing holes. Uh, and if you go past a certain speed, it's usually around seven miles an hour, seven and a half miles an hour, they'll actually start to squat in the back. They'll just pull their rear ends down. Uh, it won't do it. This one won't do it because 20 horsepower isn't enough to get it to squat or to get it past hull speed. It, it sevens pretty much as fast as it'll go with 20 horsepower. But my first Vagabond had a, a 50 horse in the back and that had plenty of power and it. You could squat. I also could do about 12 miles an hour, but I'm just plowing plowing and squatting, burning three times the fuel to get that extra six miles an hour. You know, you would have to be running from a, a tornado or something, you know, a hurricane to make it worth it. The nice thing about having like a 40 or a 50 on the back is you can pretty much just drop them in gear, you know, kick them up to maybe 15, 16, 1700, uh, uh, what am I thinking here? <laughs> um, RPMs, thank you. Uh, and, and you'll just cruise along at whole speed, but just effortlessly, just sipping fuel all day, just low, you know, low wear and tear on the motor. With this 20 horse, I have to get it up to about 3,200 RPMs to do to make it do about five and a half, six miles an hour. So, um, you know, and I'm probably spending more fuel, even with half the horsepower. That's just kind of how it works out. That's been my experience. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll show you a picture in this video of it on the trailer. This has a tandem axle aluminum trailer, which is a really nice trailer, uh, nicer than the than the one I had, the first one I had. In some ways, I liked my first one better than this one. In some ways, I like this one better. You know, but at the end of the day, I'd, I'd take either or. And um, maybe it's something I'll mention. I was talking about how they're not perfect, which no such thing, you know, as a perfect boat. <clears throat> is these? This has been my experience. Okay. Uh, because they're so wide and they're so short and they have such a short water line is the only thing I can figure it out, figure out why they do not like to track. Um, if you, they're very sensitive to weight distribution. If you're standing inside and you're driving and you want to move over to the other side or even move to the center of the boat, um, you're doing five, six miles an hour. Uh, it'll it'll just start steering to the point where it'll it'll just it'll start almost spinning on its axis like a top. I mean they they will literally turn in their own shadow. And I they don't have I mean I'm guessing they just don't have big enough keels, which you know you're limited again. I mean they only draft 15 inches. I've I've confirmed this. You know you kick the motor up. I've been in 15 inches of water and still floating. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they don't like to track. You, they basic, I call it, they just tie to the wheel. Like you're just tied to the wheel. When you're driving one of these, you really can't distract yourself. You can't go make yourself a cup of coffee. You can't look at your phone. You're really um, paying attention to keeping the boats going straight. Now, there's a couple things you can do to help with this, but it will not fix the problem. One is putting a dolphin fin on the back. A, a fellow Vagabond owner and friend uh, cued me in on that, and I did. I put one on my first one, which helped a lot, and I put one on this one. Now, my first one tracked better. I think it's because it had the 50 on the back. It had more weight on the back, and it just kind of squatted naturally because it had an extra 200 pounds or so hanging off the back, which is really what it needs, just for, just for weight alone. And it just seemed to track better. Um, of course, the faster you go, any boat will track a little better. Um, and I think just effortlessly being able to do like, you know, seven, eight knots with a 50 horse just kind of made it track better. But still, um, you know, it would it'd veer off course real easy. This one, because it only has a 20 on the back, which I think only weighs about 150 pounds, um, it actually is, a, it's, it's even when it sits in the water. It has some scuppers on the back, which when you get rain or water in the back deck, it's, you know, it'll slip out. It's kind of like a, kind of like a self-bailing deck, sort of. But this one doesn't sit low in the water enough or it doesn't squat back enough like most boats do to actually drain the water. And, you know, one way you can, you know, get a, get your scuppers to drain is you, you know, open up the motor and, you know, go a little faster and get the, the boat to kind of tip up in the front a little bit. But this one, you got to put it almost full throttle to, to get it to start draining out of the scupper. So I guess, you know, I'm saying in like five or six different ways here in this video is that this boat really does need more horsepower. But the 20 gets the job done. I mean, I'm out here in the Apostle Islands right now, and I've been all over the Apostles, all the way to the farthest island. Well, I went to Devil's Island today, you know, and I started out in Washburn. And I don't even think twice about it. It's, you know, even in rough weather, it's, it's enough horsepower to keep you going straight, but just barely. So as soon as I can, I'm kind of keeping my eyes open for a good deal on a, on a 30 or a 40 horsepower. And EFI would be, you know, ideal. Uh, I'll just go with Honda again. So, um... Yeah, guys, I don't know. What else can I tell you? That roof rack, I love it. Not everybody does. They think it's kind of an abomination of the of the boat. Like, you know, I love it. It makes it so practical. A boat where you're going to spend, you know, many nights, you know, I live on these. I mean, I've lived on them for last winter. I lived on this one for probably two months, two months straight. And um, it was made by a fella down in Florida who I met through my channel who welded it up for me. He's a, he's a metal fabricator and he made all this aluminum here. We call him the Illuminate and, uh, Illuminate. It's a play on words. <laughs> you get it. Uh, yeah, I couldn't have done this myself. Um, so yeah. And we made, you know, we, we made a deal. I worked it off and paid for it and traded some things and all came out even, I hope. I think, you know, he said it did and I think it did. So, uh, yeah. That's about all I can say, guys. I love this boat. I call it, one of the names I call it is a Swiss Army knife of boats. Um, because it'll do anything. You can live on it. It's just sips fuel. I probably am only burning six gallons of gas in this three days I'm out here in the Apostles. Just cruising all over the place. Um, they just absolutely sip fuel. But you have to be fine with going slow. They're slow boats. That's another thing I call them. A slow boat. Swiss Army knife of boat. The slow boat. The vagabond. <laughs> So, okay guys, well I hope that was interesting. I will get you some footage of the inside as well. And uh, I better get back into my boat and uh, go find myself a place to anchor tonight. So, take care, see you soon. Thank you.